All right, let's conclude chapter one today talking about uh, the historical evolution of operations management. Then we're going to pivot and talk a little bit about opportunities for employment in operations management, whether it's in the service industry or whether it's in manufacturing. And then we'll conclude talking a little bit about uh, some of the challenges that operations managers face today and some of the opportunities that are there and available for us to address those challenges uh, within operations management. So let's take a step back in time and let's talk about the historical evolution of operations management and, uh, and really how everything came to be uh, where we are today with, with the globalization focus where supply chains are global, uh, operations are, are global, and really how we've become more and more lean over the years. So it all started in the, in the, uh, the late 18th and early 19th centuries where goods were produced by artisans uh, and apprentices and everything was done by hand and it was done in small shops and in, in, in small lots. And um, one of the first things that was done to really um, take us in this journey of operations management was Eli Whitney made um, standardized parts. Okay, and so um, just little itty bitty parts that uh, could be used uh, on the same exact um, product every single time. It was a revolver and he made uh, things like a trigger that could be used on the same exact gun, no matter which uh, type that the army uh, used. And so uh, that was one of the very early concepts of operations management. It then evolved and a lot of the things we're going to talk about in this course uh, came through the mass production era and the lean production era. Well, the mass production era is when we took those artisans who were building carts and they're doing everything by hand. And um, we went from having one person doing everything to really implementing the mass production line. And you know, Henry Ford gets a lot of credit for uh, implementing the mass production line, using interchangeable parts. That's where division of labor was started. And so what you had was instead of one person doing every step of the process, there was an assembly line and, a, and one man would stand there and he would put on the wheels and another man would stand there and he put on the tires. And that was the mass production line. And that went well for a little while and, and that was really efficient. Uh, but then we started getting more and more into quality management and lean process improvement and things like the Baldridge Award. Because even though things were being built on a mass production line and that, that helps to uh, improve quality from someone who did every single step of the process, there was still a lot of room for improvement in inventory management, quality control, statistical process control. And so that was the quality focus era where we really worked on how can we also, now we've improved our operations and our productivity, but how can we also improve uh, quality as well? Then we moved into the customization era where essentially this is where uh, we've been, uh, uh, you know, uh, recently, right, where everyone can get a customized uh, car or customized shoes or clothes that are uh, you know, fit perfectly to them, whatever it may be, you know, designed for them. Um, in the in the mass customization era, we were really able to have a say in what companies built uh, around our needs because we had um, we have a customized focused. And so then the operations groups had to tailor their being able to support a flexible manufacturing process so that when people like you and me made those custom orders, they could support those orders as well. So that was the customization focus. And then here we are essentially today is, is the globalization focus. Um, companies are, are worldwide. Not only are we buying things all over from all over the world, but we're making things all over the world. Supply chains are absolutely um, global. And then we're really focusing on uh, sustainability as well. So looking at where all of those raw materials come from, uh, making sure that they're ethically sourced, and then also looking at um, the global workforce as well. So making sure that people are treated fairly and they uh, have good high labor standards. So that's kind of a, a very brief overview of the historical evolution of operations management. Uh, we went from apprentices building things to then we went to production lines, then we started working on quality, then we started working on customization, and now everything is global as well. So uh, really we've made a lot of big improvements in the field of operations management uh, over the last hundred years or so. So this whole course is on operations and supply chain management. And, and so why, right? Um, why are we learning about operations management? We talked about the key role that it plays within organizations. We've talked about how operations play such an impact in, in global supply chains and, and all of that. Uh, but, you know, for people like you that are, that are considering what you want to do with your future careers, it's, it's relevant to know where those jobs are. 
I've spent my entire career in supply chain and operations management, and I've worked in both industries, um, two, the two main uh, sectors, uh, both manufacturing and service, um, in, within a field in, of, of operations and supply chain management. So when you're looking at the chart on the screen, what you can see is um, there has been a dramatic change in where those jobs are uh, within operations and supply chain management. So if you look back 200 years, um, everyone uh, was in agriculture, right? So lots and lots of farmers, right? People were having to you know, grow their own food and then they would eat it themselves. Then they started trading, right? And so then uh, manufacturing started to kick up in the, in the early 1900s and you can see it peaked right around World War II. Uh, so when you hear a lot of people talk about, oh, back in the good old days when everything was, was manufactured here, well, even back then, only 30-ish to you know, maybe 40-ish percent of the jobs were in manufacturing in America. Um, but now that we've gotten more global and supply chains are more global and operations are more global, you can see that that manufacturing decline has started to happen uh, over the course of the last 50, 60 years. And you know, un unless we can make some dramatic changes, things probably are not going to go back. So you can see agriculture, the jobs in agriculture uh, has uh, dramatically declined to where it's it's only a few percent of the total workforce, about one to two percent. Manufacturing is now only about eight to you know ten percent or so of all the jobs uh, available in America, and then the service sector is now eighty six percent of the total jobs that are available uh, in operations management. This is where all employment is. So you can see you know there's there's a lot of jobs uh, in services. Um, even the textbook states you know San Diego State again that's a service. So all the professors uh, that you that you have throughout your um, your time at San Diego State. Uh, they're all performing a service. If you go to you know, the San Diego Zoo, those people who work on the zoo grounds, they're performing a service. Uh, Sharp Hospital, uh, who is, is one of uh, the strategic partners that, that I work with today, uh, all of those folks who are providing care to people around town, they are all services. So those are all people who are in the service industry uh, and have various aspects uh, within operations management. Okay, so... Um, uh, this was the, this was the slide I was just talking to uh, a little bit about the different jobs and services. So you can see again, the service sector is about eighty six percent, manufacturing is about eight to ten percent, uh, construction is only about four percent, and then agriculture is about one to two percent. So when you add those all up, that's hundred percent of the United States employment, and um, it, things just keep going up and up in regards to the service sector as we do more and more manufacturing overseas. It actually makes more people involved in services. Uh, uh, supply chain services and, and services that are needed to support those global operations. So uh, that is a, a, a trend uh, that will most likely continue for the foreseeable future. All right, so let's talk about some of the challenges in operations management. We're not going to go through all of these, uh, but just one thing I don't love about this slide, you know, I, I put the new challenges in operations management, but really what I, I should also put is that there's opportunities with every single one of these challenges as well. So when we talk about a global focus being a challenge in operations management, well, it's also an opportunity too. For someone like me, when I started my career in the early 2000s, I started off as, as a purchasing agent. And very soon, the world became more and more globalized. And so all of a sudden, something that wasn't really a career, being a buyer. Now there's strategic sourcing people and global sourcing commodity managers and supply chain is absolutely a career. And that's why many of you who are watching this lecture today are even getting a degree in supply chain management. So the global focus, that decline in communication and transportation costs have made our markets more global, that's an opportunity. Being able to work uh, and communicate with people uh, all around the world, that is an opportunity in operations management. Sustainability. The concern for products and processes that are eco ecologically sustainable, yeah, that's a challenge, absolutely, but it's also an opportunity. Again, when I started my career, no one really cared about green products or recycling and those kind of things. It just wasn't a big deal. We were very focused on the bottom line, not on the triple bottom line, making sure that we were also protecting the environment and being good stewards of other uh, people who were building products for us. And so there's been a, a big shift in that over the course of the last 20 years where we're now designing green products and, and you know minimizing packaging and working on reducing, reusing, and recycling. Those are all opportunities in operations management uh, as you know, we get more and more of these challenges within operations management. Other examples are mass customization. 
uh, you know, again, I talked about earlier with the historical evolution of operations management, that mass customization is absolutely a challenge in operations management. Making products specifically for people and doing a quick turnaround time is not easy. But the opportunity in that is that we, as managers in operation, have to find ways to create flexible production lines, lean supply chains, just-in-time inventory. And so all of those things have to be done to support uh, the customers who have very quickly uh, uh, have changed, right? We've, we've changed our preferences, we've changed our ordering practices, and as the customers change and evolve, operations management has to be able uh, to do that as well. So uh, really creating those just-in-time uh, inventory metrics um, helps us to uh, really have flexible manufacturing and mass customization. All right, and so lastly, um, one other thing that operations managers uh, face is, is there's challenges out there. So there's challenges being, you know, uh, socially responsible, being, you know, uh, building products that are that are green and sustainable. And um, when you are in operations or supply chain management, we really have to focus on developing and producing safe, high quality green products. Um, you have options when you're in purchasing or when you're in operations. Which vendors do I want to buy from? Do I want to buy from vendors that have green products or do I not? Do I want to buy from uh, vendors that you know uh, are having clean, safe manufacturing uh, facilities or ones that maybe have a lower cost and, and aren't as green? And so these are decisions that you will make in operations and supply chain management, and that's one of the challenges that you face as well. Um, one of the bad jokes I'll make throughout the semester is that I'm in supply chain and I've got the money. I've got the money and everyone else wants it. Right now, my team oversees a billion dollars worth of purchases every single year. So trust me, people are coming to us, trying to be kind to us, trying to win, win us over so that when we have the option of where to spend those billions of dollars, that we spend it with them versus their competition. So you face ethical issues um, all the time on where you're going to buy and manufacture your products. Other opportunities in operations management are to train, retrain, and motivate your employees in a safe workplace. That might sound a little silly to have to say out loud that we want our employees in a safe workplace, but again, that has um, it is it's grown leaps and bounds uh, from when I started my career uh, 20 years ago. That um, employees back then were um, really just worked and grinded, and they weren't respected and listened to. Whereas now we realize that employees are a key source of helping us to improve our productivity, improve our quality, but also that we need to take care of our employees because they're one of the biggest assets that we have. So we want to treat them right so that they stay with us for the long term and help us in that journey of making our products uh, safe, reliable, fast turnaround times, and just really employees are some of the biggest assets that we've got. So that is our responsibility as an operations manager to look out for our employees um, especially in you know manufacturing and, and service sectors to make sure that they are in a safe workplace and they are trained well. And that is all for the overview of operations management. Uh, we will move on uh, next to chapter two, which is global supply chains and uh, operations.